Hello and thank you for tuning into Stampscaping 101. This is a lesson that uh, I think I've thought about doing before, but I'm finally getting around to it, okay? This lesson, this video, is about taking a scene from a given kind of a quality or finish, you might say, and pushing a few different concepts within the scene to make a more complete, I guess, textural and uh, deep visual, all right? And what I mean by that is um, taking a given scene, and what do I do in this video is we talk about extending the range of hue, okay, color, in a given color scheme, adding a little bit of extra whatever color it may be to a given areas or to given spots in your scene. So there's color, value, taking your scenes and pushing them one step darker or two steps from, you know, kind of a, a more limited range of value, okay? Values in terms of darks, okay? Um, shadows, anchoring your scenes down, talking about shadows again, you know, and making things a little bit darker vignettes and shadows around objects, okay? And then um, what we do is we talk about foreground, adding something to your foreground to really push the field of view, okay? And the range of uh, depth within a given scheme can really um, do a lot for a given scene. Having something nice and dark, you know, it puts the viewers right into the scenes, you know, as opposed to having something so distant. And in some areas you might want that, but I'm talking about just in terms of things that you can possibly do if you wanted to. All right, now after that, what I think I did, I'm kind of forgetting, but um, going back into it and adding some additional texture. So we have a given scene stamped out, pushing the textural range of something in the form of some easy gel pen, paint pen, highlights within a given scene, adding stars to a scene, highlights down in the water, highlights on grasses or whatnot. It's kind of, you know, reiterating what's kind of going on in the shadows, except instead of hitting the shadow areas, we're hitting the highlights, okay? And it also, like I said, adds a kind of nice textural range. If you want to add in, you know, little highlights down there, if you want to add in, um, wildflowers to a scene. You can do that with these pens, these types of pens. It's, you know, an opportunity to go into a scene and to add something lighter on top of something darker, okay? A lot of times we're just doing this additive process of getting darker and darker and darker because you can't add like a light blue dye-based ink over the top of black and have it look light blue, okay? colors are transparent, so stuff like that, you know, um, gel pens are a really fun way to go back in and add, you know, light into dark, as far as a textural standpoint. The foreground adds a lot of texture too, you know, something kind of hard against, you know, something nice and shimmery, we have something hard here, you know, in terms of this grass, it's a you know, solid object, I'm saying. But the grass itself looks a little bit softer than these foreground reeds, right? But in staying with that theme of textural range now, we've gone back in, in some areas, and added a little bit of white pigment ink in the, with a, you know, with a little Q-tip cotton swab. Add a little bit of fog next to, you know, I don't know, the water's edge adding a little bit of that lighter area on a tree, so it makes the tree seem a little bit more dimensional. Here's some white areas back in here, so I've kind of put the little bit of pigment ink on there, and it looks like it's glowing, it looks like it's backlit now. A little bit of fog in the foreground too, if you want to. So little things like that really add up. I mean, foreground like that, you know, took me seconds to add in a few impressions of that, okay? One little extra tone like that in these given areas really extends the, the color scheme of given area. A little swipe like that, you know, 
in these areas to do them all, you know, took less than a minute, okay? Dots, well, it might take a little bit more than a minute, but it doesn't take too long to add those in. Oh, and one of the other things I did was I went in with some alcohol-based pens and added, you know, some variation to my cabins and chapel right here. You know, little, little shadows and some areas that are a little bit harder to get to, you know, if I'm using like a sponge applicator or something like that. I can't, you know, color one plank of wood or something like that. You know, I can't hit underneath that eave with a little bit of color. So little things like that are really fun to do and they don't take a lot of time, but added up, you know, I think it makes for a more complete visual statement, you know, just to extend your range of uh, all those different um, kind of uh, things that are in the vocabulary of uh, color, you know, value, hue, temperature, whatever, and when it comes to comp compositions, near and far, okay? Textures, visual textures and whatnot. So anyways, um, if you watch this video, I hope you'll see that all these different things can be done with, you know, relative ease, and it doesn't take too much more time to add those different elements into your scenes to kind of push them a little bit further in terms of, a, you know, a, I don't know, a, kind of a graphic visual statement. And I don't know, I think it looks, I don't know, I hesitate to say real or something like that, but it includes a lot of the, uh, the visual um, kind of vocabulary that's kind of going on when we look outside or something like that. We do see highlights on things, you know even this like stamp pad right here, you know, if I go like this, that's a highlight, right? But, you know, I can see these little highlights on the side. Here's a little highlight on this piece of wood, right? It's not just all brown all the way around. But all those little things kind of add up in a scene like this, you know, when you add those little details on, you know, that are going on, you know, all around us, here's a highlight right here. Anyway, you get the point. So anyways, thanks for tuning in and hope you enjoy this uh, vid. Okay, we're going to try to do a couple different scenes here, and uh, what this video is about is taking your scenes from kind of beginning stages and adding a lot of embellishments to it um, to take the scene to the next level. And that's where a lot of the fun is for me in uh, doing cards, it's the little details that you know, are not time-consuming to do or tedious, but they can add a lot of character to a scene, okay? And I'm going to show you all of my little secrets in this. I mean, it's in really all of the videos that I do. You know, I'm doing all of these processes, but I'll kind of explain maybe in greater detail, um, you know, about the specifics of... Uh, those things and uh, just how easy they can be. Okay, now I'm inking up this lakeside cabin in black and I'm adding on some dark green to it just to see if I get a little bit of variation in those trees. If I don't, no big deal. And I can do the same thing down in the water, down those reflections down there of some of the trees. But like I said, this will most likely just stamp out, um, for the most part, kind of a black, you know. And if I've removed enough of the ink with this green, then we'll get a little bit of variation. But you do not have to do that. You can just stamp it out in black if you want. Okay, let's make this card in uh, a landscape horizontal format. All right, um, just because I'm gonna do the other one in a portrait, you know, kind of more vertical, because I'm gonna be using a larger stamp for that one. Okay. <clears throat> okay, plenty of pressure from left to right and middle. Okay, so there's a tiny bit of variation in here in terms of black and green, dark green. It's very, very subtle, even, you know, to my eye, looking close up, I see a little bit of green, right? Kind of in that area, but it's just a, a subtle little thing, you know, for a little bit of a, uh, you know, variation, like I said. 
Okay, that is that. Now, I'll add more things to that, but you'll see where this is going here. Um, this is the Country Chapel stamp, and again, I will just ink this up in black. And I'll see if I can go for a little bit of variation in this as well. And if you've seen me do this in other videos, I just kind of explain in those that, yeah, this is picking up a little bit of that black and, you know, I'm not doing a yellow into black or something like that, but this dark green, I just kind of roll that off and, you know, it's green again, so, you know, not a big deal. Uh, these also happen to be big fat brush markers, though, you, know, you see the tip there, so. I don't know if I would do that with like a narrow tip la plume or something like that. You don't want to shred your your pen, of course, but you can kind of be more delicate with it. Okay, let's go for a. I'll go for about I don't know midway up the card or so. A lot of surface area on this one, so be sure to give it plenty of pressure. There we have that. There's a little bit of variation in there. I didn't get some of that rooftop there, but no, not a big deal. Um, okay, so we have our foundations here. And if you've seen the video on grasses, as far as the uh, Stampscaping 101 uh, Stamp Along video titles, You'll see how to use some grass textures. I'm going to fill in with some grass textures on this. I can add a, things like a little pathway leading up to that chapel, but I think I'm just going to stamp in a little bit of this grass. This is the large grass texture. You can also just use um, the Sedge Filler stamp, which is this one right here. But just to go for a little bit more depth, I'm using uh, you know, the larger grass texture down below. Okay, so anyways, this is... I'm just doing this in dark green. You can do it in black, though, as well. Or, if, you know, if it's not going to be a, you know, a green color scheme, then, you know, do it in whatever color is out of your color scheme. Like, say, for example, this could be a summertime scene or something like that, and the grasses are kind of brown, you know, or fall. All right, so no need to mask. So we have our two foundations here. I'll add other things to this as well. I can add some water texture pattern or something like that, but we'll decide then, okay? But now, all right, now as far as your approach to this, we've done this before and in other scenes, and that's what, what this video is about. But what I'll do is I'll go through the blending process on here as far as adding some tone, okay? And then we'll get down to those other kind of more detailed points about um, kind of taking that scene to the next level as far as uh, visual interest goes. And I'll show you just how easy those things are to do, and I'll do them on both of the things at the same time, okay? Or I'll take it through the process of that. All right, now this is a ocean aqua color. It's a very thick Ranger ink, Ranger Industries. Um, let me see. I, I was wondering if I have that blue. No, I don't have that blue distress ink. It's, I think it's called Tumbled Glass or something. That would be a good one to use. Or you can use something like a Summer Sky or... You know, really, whatever um, color you have. <clears throat> Most inks out there on the market are kind of the thicker inks, and they're, you know, pretty good to use as far as your first color on here. Now, on this scene right here, what I'm looking at is, you know, this scene, if this is a lakeside cabin, you know, we have these reflections down there. That's the thing that says that that's water. If I didn't want that water, and I wanted it to be like this meadow right here, then I just wouldn't color in those reflections and I would stamp it out and put the grass texture down below. So you can do things like that. But let's get into our scene here. 
my ink up there is a little bit wet still, so I'm kind of smearing a little bit of it, but not a big deal because we're going to be adding a lot of different things into this scene. But here's the thing. Okay, now as far as adding your color, now this is not what this video is about, but we'll just do some review. I'm just taking this, swiping it in, in a nice kind of gradual fashion. I'm staying in one area like this. See, I'm kind of dragging it across, but uh, let's see, I don't want to get too much streaking in those trees, but eh, it's not too bad. I'm dragging a little bit of color, but it's kind of just blending right in. <clears throat> as far as the smearing aspect of that black ink goes, but like I said, I'll live with it. All right. Okay, now here's the thing. Just leave some areas light, all right? And that's the thing that beginners do. They tone everything out. They color every square inch of something, you know? So that's kind of to be expected because in most forms of stamping, what you do is you have these areas, right? These zones, in, you know, in terms of outline stamps. And when there's an outline of some area, in a lot of those forms of stamping, what you're doing is you're coloring in that entire area, one solid gradation value of color, okay? So here's water, we're coloring it all in, but I like, for variation's sake, lighting in a scene, okay? So let's say right here, we have some kind of area of light up here, right? It's very subtle, okay? And there, I live in an area of light down here, so there's two areas, okay? So I streak all these colors in, but I leave a couple areas just as is, okay? Now that's going to really help us with our, um, you know, kind of a scene enhancement uh, section. Okay, now this is going to be a blue sky and a green grass area down below, so I'm just going to use the same blue up here. But see this area of the sky? I'm going to leave some of it just light, so it represents kind of a cloudy area. Now, if you have like a cloud or a moon or a sun or something like that, then you would have an actual object to work around, okay? So you'd be doing the same type of concept, but you'd just be working around an image. Okay, I'm starting to smear a lot of There's a ton of ink in there, so I need to be a little bit more careful about taking some of that in there, but I'll still retain some of the light um, areas of the, uh, the scene, okay? Now, blue relates to green, right? Because blue and yellow mix to form um, green. So I can take some of this blue and add it to my grassy area. But see, I'm just leaving some of it light. I can even put some of this up on the... Uh, the chapel if I want a little bit of color on some areas of the chapel, okay? So there is kind of a lighting and reflected lighting, okay? And that'll come into play, you know, the more we uh, work on this, okay? But see how easy this is? I'm just streaking the color in, but just leaving some areas like that. Now all you have to do is when you go into this, let me try the salvia blue. I'm just going a little bit darker. See, it's not, you know, that's what it looks like fully, you know, applied, but see, I'm kind of streaking that out like that, and we get this nice even blend. Okay, and you'll when I get a little bit darker and a little bit darker, you'll be able to see better kind of that, you know, that idea of that lighting scheme in here in terms of, uh, light and reflected light, okay? So it just looks like that, all right? So that should be easy enough, right? I hope I didn't lose anyone yet. <clears throat> okay, same thing. Just applying this in roughly the same area that I did with my previous color. Okay, this is a, just a light blue. Sometimes what you're going to be doing is you're going to be applying some of that color and it's looking like nothing's getting applied. It looks like nothing's happening. So, and it's because the paper is getting a little bit slick, okay? Because it's getting saturated with ink. 
and you're going with wet ink right here, so it's like you're almost kind of removing some ink, okay? If that's the case, then if you want to get a little bit more coverage, then you have to kind of tap like that, where you're building up these little beads of ink on the paper and it's getting darker, okay? Sometimes when you wipe it across, right, you're wiping ink off of it, but just tap it in that case and you'll get a little bit of a deeper application of it, okay? Same thing up in the sky, see that right up there? It's not very dark, right? No, it's not supposed to be dark, but dark as the color that I'm using for sure. So, see this right here? I can just kind of tap it in like so. And see, I'm kind of moving my wand. I'm not just tapping like in one small area like this and never moving my wand. Then I'm gonna get an oval shape, okay? So because of this, I'm kind of moving around a little bit like this, but I'm seeing I'm staying in one area, I'm not tapping it around like this, okay? Work little zones, you know, so you get that nice transition of colors going from wet, like this, and a lot of taps, to lighter, less taps, okay? Or drier on here. Okay? So, let me see if I can add a little bit more to this one. It was kind of drying up there a little bit, so when the card gets a little bit drier, sometimes it's more receptive to um, additional inks because it's not kind of repelling the ink from being so dry. And you can kind of see the uh, that streakiness kind of uh, coming about even more. All right, now let's go to kind of your medium tone blue, and I'll start getting into the uh, the greens for the grasses on this scene. Okay, so let's take um, this Bahama blue or the. I'll tell you what, I'm gonna Bahama blue would be perfect or any other brand of ink, but just. Because I know those inks are thicker than the Marvy ones, I'm going to use the Marvy ones for this video purpose so I can get along, you know, with the, uh, you know, the content that I'm kind of moving towards. All right, with your dark, darker tone, kind of be a, a little bit more uh, gradual in terms of your application of it. In other words, I'm staying on the outside a little bit longer, and I'm using kind of a, a lighter touch on this because the ink is darker, so I don't want to get a big, you know, like that in my scene. So what I you have is me just kind of gently touching the paper with this, and I'm just applying that ink in a very light fashion. Imagine someone's applying something to their face, or like a baby's face or something like that. You're not going to press into it, okay? If you want to get that darker, you just use additional strokes like that. See that? You'll get this nice, gradual transition from the edge of the card, darker, more ink, to lighter in between in the middle here, because you're using more ink out there. And then you're just lightly taking this in. Okay, I'm not going with a straight line like this and then coming up, it's more of like this, you know, it's whisking, okay? Turn your card over, start again from the outside. Working my way in. Sometimes, a lot of times, I have this applicator kind of on its edge like this. See what's happening like that? Okay, so we can see it. You know, that's a nice transition right there. Let's use this up in the sky here. Outside. In. See, I'm working my little zone here of color. Okay, flip it over. Okay, like so. We definitely have kind of this defined light source up here. It's just this little glow on the horizon, I guess, or behind that uh, chapel. All right, now let me switch tips. I've been using the same tip for all those transitions of blue. Let's switch over to this one and, and I'll use um, some greens down here in the grass. But instead of starting dark, 
Okay, I'm going to start light. Start with whatever the lightest color you have when um, using um, kind of a new hue or defining a different uh, color scheme in a given area of your card, okay? That's not a rule um, hard and fast, but just in terms of building up color and just making the process easier, especially for beginners, start off with a light tone and work incrementally darker. Now, this grass right here might get, might achieve kind of a darker hue in the end result, but that doesn't mean that all of this is a lost cause. The, um, the more colors underneath those top colors, the richer the scene will appear from getting, achieving kind of a transparent ink color glow, okay? The colors underneath will show through and it'll affect the end result. Okay, that was a uh, yellow green. Let's try the memento bamboo leaves, a really kind of great earthy tone green. It's pretty bright and warm. Okay, but remember to leave some of that area in there just as is, okay? Nice and light. Okay, so remember to do that throughout all of your different colors, um, all of your different values within a given color scheme. Okay, this is a uh, cottage ivy memento. It's you know it's kind of a neutral kind of Christmassy green, I guess you can say. It might have a little bit more yellow in it. So we have that, all right? Not bad. I mean, the, the chapel can use up a little bit of color, but I'll go into that with maybe some pens or something like that. All right, now let me switch back over to my blue and let's go to a darker blue here. Same type of thing. Remember to retain your areas of light when you get to the darker colors, okay? Which means just don't tone it all out. You know, be careful around that. water. Okay, all right, so we have that nice kind of transition of hue going on in here, and really both the scenes. There's some darker areas and lighter areas. Let's address those buildings. Those are something that I think everyone would do anyway. Um, let's go with um, some brown tones um, for the cabin and chapel. Grab a new stylus tool. Well, not new, but clean. Um, any of the distress inks, well, not mustard, but walnut, tea dye, antique linen. I'm sure there's a lot more of those types of uh, tan, warm tones, wooden, woody, woody looking earth tones. I'm starting off with the light one first, right? Okay, now the light one, you can see it's just, you know, you can, I could put that over the whole thing. This Now this is not a new pad either, so, um, I don't know, maybe a brand new pad would look darker, but, you know, not very much darker because it's a very light hue, which is a perfect one to start off with, okay? See that right there? It's not a big commitment to that color but it's a great foundation to start off with. 
Let's move to a darker tone, let's say a walnut stain. Now, with the walnut stain, let's hit some areas in here that um, might be kind of a little bit more in shadows. Well, you can do it on the entire vertical sides of some walls, you know, like that. So you see there's a little bit of variation because it's darker and lighter up front, right? It looks like it's front lit to me, you know, this uh, building. And how you can tell that is you can just kind of look at the design or, you know, if you're working with an unmounted one and it's not, you know, um, index like that one, you can just stamp out a version of it and you can see where the design is just darker inherently and just go into those areas and darken those areas with a darker color out of that given color scheme, okay? So the color scheme in the cabin is brown, light brown for overall, and dark brown on the sides or in the shadows. Same thing as something like this. See, I just kind of add that darker brown to that roof, and that, now it looks a little bit more three-dimensional, right? I hit the other color on the roof and on the sides, but on the darker tones, I just did it on the sides. Now it looks like a little bit more three-dimensional, where the roof is capturing some of that light. That's too light for me, though, so I like to bring in a little bit of tone, like something like that. Okay. You can hit some of this on those rocks if you want to as well. Okay. All right, so... Now, I mean, I know this scene doesn't look like it's complete or anything like that. Chances are you would add some other foreground elements or background elements or something in there as far as subject matter goes. But let's start on the kind of scene enhancement stage, okay? This looks like a really good foundation for you know, scenic stamping right here, okay? But let's go into, while well, we're working on color, okay? Right now we have these zones of color, okay? There's warm tones right in here, and then there's cool tones right here. Blue, basically. Down here, there's blues in here, and there's yellows. So there's a little bit of variation going in here, but, and up here in, you know, the sky, we just have blue, okay? So we're looking at areas, just blue, and green, all right? Now, if we want to extend the range of hue in a given area, that's kind of your first step, you know, to enhancing your scenes, okay? Now, we could have done this along in the process, but I'm just kind of showing this to you after the fact so you can kind of see my points here, maybe. <laughs> um, okay, so let's take a look at this water, all right? It's just blue. Now there's different ways I can take this. I can put a little bit of a pink up there in the sky. Maybe it'll look more like um, early dawn or I was going to say, I don't know if it would look like dusk, but um, maybe dawn or something like that. All right. Let's do that. Because I can also take this kind of in greens or something like that, more aqua. But all right, for the sake of this video, let's just go with a little bit of pink, okay? Pinks, violets, something like that, right? I will add one color. This is pretty bright, so I'm kind of toning it down a little bit. I'm taking some of the color off, okay? And I'm just going to streak this in. It's a very light version of this pink, okay? But in here while I'm adding kind of one hue to this given color scheme. I'm actually getting more than one version of it visually, okay? Because where pink overlaps blue, it starts to turn more violet, right? And then we have variations of this pink. I'm going to still retain some of that lightness, because I like that lighting scheme up there, okay? But now what we've done is just by adding one color, you've introduced, you know, two colors. There's violet and pink, and then there's variations of that violet. Wherever there's less blue and pink overlaps, it looks like a lighter violet, okay? So you're getting some variation just by simply doing that, okay? Now well, let's have some of this as a reflective type of situation, so why don't I have some of that um, color? down here in my reflection as well, okay? 
So now we've extended the range of hue in two different areas, okay? So you've, in a sense, what you've taken is a, an area of blue and we've tripled it, you know, multiplied it by three. Okay, now you have three tones in here. You have violet, pink, and blue. So suddenly you've already extended the range of those ones out. Now, here's what I like to do too. Here's another one of my little secrets too. Um, if I was to do, you know, if that's the lighting in here, okay, that kind of pinkish lavender color scheme represents lighting in here, right? Because those are the lit areas. I can bring some of this pink down here into my rock. See, it's very subtle, but it relates to that color because it's reflecting that same color light. Here's a little bit of this rooftop. We have browns up there, right? Just going in here with a light pink, pale pink, and adding that to that. It's just a little bit of that color, okay? But it, it relates to that. So now you've taken that area of brown and added pink to that. And uh, we've extended the range of hue in that given area as well. Let's do the same thing, just so you can see where that comes into play in other types of color schemes, okay? Now you wouldn't think of, uh, this is like a mirrored situation right here, but this is not. But I'll show you where this can come into play and look, you know, pretty good. Okay, bringing some of this tone into here. So we get a little of that. It changed the time of day, kind of, right? But now, believe it or not, let's test this out in the grass, okay? So we have light and reflected light, okay? I don't want pink grass, but I might want a hint of it. Let's say something like this, okay? See, so it looks like pink, kind of, there. It's subtle. You kind of dry brush it in there, right? So suddenly we've changed and extended the range of hue up here and down in this area. Let's add a little bit more here, okay? Something like that, back there, okay? All right, so that is the range of hue, okay? We've doubled, tripled it, and it, that was, I mean, this is really simple to do. This is one light color, and it really added a lot to it, I feel. Okay. All right. Um, I'm trying to think if I wanted to add something more. Do you know how I went with some of that um, walnut stain in the chapel? Okay. And on the cabin here. Let's take the same walnut stain, brown, okay? And also add that down into the grass, okay? Giving it something to relate to in terms of the usage of hue, different colors of, you know, different colors. So something like that, all right? It's a little bit more earthy, I feel in terms of a color scheme. And that, I like that when it comes to my grass. Okay. I feel it looks a little more, I don't know, I hate to use the word realistic, but you know, something like that. Okay, so just with a couple little colors, this is like tweaks, it's not doing like massive, you know, changes on here or something of that sort. Okay, so what you do, in your various areas, we already have kind of a change of value in these areas, just from, you know, avoiding the white of the paper. But going back into those areas now, you see where those areas of white really come in handy? Because if you want to get a pure version of another color, 
you can get that because you've left it white. If everything up there was all blue, you can add that pink up there, but you wouldn't get those all that variation of pink, lavender, and blue just by adding one color like that. You'd have lavender and maybe various shades of it, you know, dark, you know, light, whatever. But retaining that light in there really helps out that aspect of the uh, of the tweaking, uh, for lack of a better word. Okay, so we've extended our range of colors in here. Okay, now here's the thing that I like to do as well um, that I think is really effective in scenic stamping. Okay, now we have these areas in here, blues, greens, whatnot, okay? Let me find my tip here. Okay, there's my blue one. Okay, now what we can do too, we've extended our color range, okay? Now I'll show you how simple this is right here. We're going to push the value range in here, okay? That just simply means going with a darker color in certain areas, okay? One of the easiest ways to do that, let me say, I think I already used this blue in here, or did I? I think I did, but it might have been on a kind of a wetter piece of paper, so let me see if I can get a little bit darker using this one, and I can, okay? This is just your dark blue, it's kind of a navy blue, you can go with whatever navy blue um, you have, okay? But see this right here, you can see on one side the difference between this side and this side, okay? It's really pushing the, the value range, okay? But now, you don't have to go in too far. I mean, I went in, you know, decent ways on this, but it was with a drier version of it, okay? I'll do this on the top two corners, okay? And that's all it took. It was simple enough, okay? But we've suddenly, what we've done is we've pushed the value range from light to darker right up here. And I'll go even darker after, and then I'll show you what that looks like. Okay, now sometimes on my horizon lines, I like to kind of separate the two areas of light with an area of darkness, okay? But now here's the thing too, when we're getting darker, hit your shadows with whatever color out of your color scheme relates to those areas. In this case, it's going to be blue, okay? So see, I've hit the shadows in here a little bit more. And for, for me, it kind of anchors the subject matter the objects into the scene more when you have kind of this idea that they're casting some shadows, okay? All right, let's take that same blue and let's put it up here now. Okay, so see, a couple little swipes with that pink really extended the the color range. Now watch this, this is dark, you know, a darker color that I'm putting right here. Let's test how many times it takes. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. 8, 12, 12, 6, 12, 7. 27 little swipes on that side. Didn't re-ink one time, but see it's kind of darker right here. And I feel that the scene is a little bit more contained up top there, especially. We'll go even darker after that, but here's some shadows down here in the trees. I can use green too, but sometimes if you just use like a blue overlapping green, it just looks like a darker green. Okay, so see here, I'm just adding this into the shadows, and how do I know to do that? Maybe it's just because, there, you know, this area down here has some shadows in it, so all I'm doing is reiterating that. Okay, and it stands to reason that things that are standing in something else would have a, sh you know, kind of a, a shadow, right? If it's being lit from somewhere, it'll have a shadow somewhere, okay? Corners of the card, just ink it up once, tapping it around like this, okay? Blending it in a little bit, okay? So we have it darker on the four corners now and in our shadows, which anchors the scene a little bit more, okay? I'm gonna use a little bit more of that blue. I can come into here with greens too, but I mean, for me, that looks, you know, 
pretty green down there just by using the blue, right? So we didn't even have to change colors, you know, from sky to grass, okay? You see that right now? That's a little bit more, this is driving me nuts, let me curl this back the other way. Okay, all right. Now, let's stay with that same concept, okay? Hitting the shadows a little bit more. We went with the blue here, dark blue. Now we've stamped out our imagery in black. Okay, now this is where you kind of get a lot of practice, you know, in terms of your application of a darker hue. Okay, in this case, it's gonna be as dark as we can get in the form of black. But I'll show you what this can do too, going all the way to black. Let's look at this. Let's do it in the corners, okay? Like a silhouette, okay? Now be really careful now. Don't take this in too far. You know, use a nice light touch and use it right there on the, that end. And I'll do that over here too, okay? Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty. Well, twenty-four swipes or something like that. I mean, don't count out what you're doing, but I'm just saying you don't need a million, you know, things with that, okay? Here in the shadows for those trees, let's see if I can kind of make it look as though those trees are being anchored. At this point in time, I'm kind of using my side of my brush, or not brush, but foam applicator here, okay? See that? It's a little bit darker in the shadows. I can add this into the grass as well. It's kind of looking like a gray, gray-green in those areas, okay? How about the bottom left and right corner? So see, adding shadows to kind of enhance your lighting, okay? So that's what we have here. It's very incremental, it's easy to do. Here's this uh, scene. Let's go with the black on this one as well. One, two, three, four, five, six areas, okay? Just take it one area at a time, okay? Come in with the black on that side. I'll stay a little bit more perimeter oriented, okay? So that, that's all I needed right there. Now I'll just come in and do it the same on the other side. Same down here in the bottom corner. I have a little fingerprint there. I had some uh, lotion on my finger or something, so it's kind of acting as a resist. But you can see what this is doing. It kind of, uh, it's making a stronger vignette around the composition, around the card, the scene, okay? So like that. Now let's hit it in here, okay, and I don't want to tone out my cabin, but if I do this type of motion right here, right in the shadows, it should anchor that kind of little island down a little bit more. Okay, so like that. It's a nice um, values um, range now. We have lights all the way to pretty dark there. Okay, all right. Now that being said, what we can also do at this point in time is add little things like um, you know, additional shadows, but this is just kind of going for an extended value range just by making your corners a little bit darker and my shadow areas with ink, okay? All right, so that's done with that. So we've extended our color range. You know, we've taken it from one color and made it three, so we've tripled those areas, like in those areas right there, okay? Down here in the grass, same thing. We've added some browns down here. There's some blues, darker tones, 
So suddenly this area right here is not just this solid bar of a uniform value green, okay? We have a lot of different greens in here. By retaining some of those lighter areas, we see the pure versions of some additional tones laid down there, and that makes the scene, you know, um, visually more interesting, richer, okay? All right, now let's go into the scenes here, and let's add in some additional foreground, okay? <clears throat> This could be done in the form of some trees or branches or something like that in the foreground. So we've done color, shading. Now let's go for field of view, okay? Having some things larger next to the viewer, which is us looking into the scene, okay? And I'll just go with some grass on this one or reeds. This is the reeds large stamp, okay? So suddenly the closest thing to our eye was 10 feet, let's say. Now when you add in your foreground like that, we've added something that represents something, I don't know, two or three feet from us, let's say, okay? So you've taken a range, a visual range of say 10 feet to I don't know, the sky, call it infinity or something like that. Now you have 10 feet to infinity, now you have 2 feet to infinity, so you've added 8 feet of visual space in there, okay? And what this also did was it added extra value in terms of the range of values down here, right? Because it's dark, and now texturally too, we have something kind of harder, even though it's supposed to represent grass, but it's, it's fairly solid against something softer, so you've added this textural range in here. And it's just with a few things like that, you know? Um, if you want to, you can do a couple different sizes of something like this. Here's some more grass. It's the smaller reeds. Doesn't need to be in there, but, you know, just in terms of scale, you can do something like that. Okay. Um, let's do the same thing here. Okay, now I I just used this in a fairly recent video. This one's the prickly branches, just to create a little bit of variation between the two scenes. I'll use this as my foreground. I'm going to tilt it like this a little bit so it looks like we're looking through a couple different uh, things. Okay. Tilt this one this way, maybe. Giving some visual space for the viewer to kind of come into the scene. Maybe I'll go for another impression of this lower. Okay. I like that. I'm, I'm going to go for one more over here, too, just to make it a little bit more dense. Okay, two more. Okay, that is good enough. Okay, so we have this foreground here. Now this one, we've really added something close to us. It's like a foot from our eye, okay? So suddenly, that was the closest thing to our eye in terms of distance. What was that? Maybe... I don't know, 40 yards away or something like that. To now, we have something that's, you know, whatever, 12 inches from us. So there's 40 yards to 12 inches. We've added a ton of space, visual space, in that. Okay, so suddenly we've gone when we've um, added space. So we've added hue in terms of other colors, contrast in terms of you know, vignettes and and shadows, okay? Now we've added depth with the use of some foreground imagery. You know, this one right here, stamp out your reeds a, a few times, and that really increases the space. Something right here, too, I, I don't know, one that thing, prickly branches stamped about five times or something like that. Could have done it twice, you know? But 
that really adds a lot in terms of spatial depth. All right. Now let's get into some other things. Okay, now embellishments. All right. I really like to use um, these pens here, these alcohol based pens, okay? Um, these ones are called La Plume Permanents, but they're the same thing as like Copics and any other number of uh, companies that sell alcohol based pens, okay? Alcohol based pens are fun to use. I, I really like them in the lighter values. I use the lighter values probably 90% of the time. I rarely use the darker ones because what I'm doing with these pens, and you can use, it doesn't have to be alcohol based pens too. It could be a, you know, a water based pen, like a water brush, watercolor marker, or something of that sort. But what I like to do on these is I like to come in and if I want a little bit of variation or details on some areas, I can do that, okay? Like maybe in the case of this chapel right here, I might, you know, make a board, you know, or two a little bit darker than others, rather than just coloring in the whole thing, you know what I mean? That's why um, I didn't uh, just color the whole thing with the... Uh, Um, the stylus tool uh, process. Okay, but anyways, I'm adding a little bit of vari variation to that cabin. I don't like some of those marks, but one thing good about the uh, this is that you can blend it, okay? So as is, I don't like some of these things in here, but I just all I do is just go in here and blend it out a little bit. Okay. So like this underneath that little eave there, it's a very shallow eave, but um, let's go into that eave and just take this marker and add a little bit of shadow to it like that, okay. And again, you can just take a look. Where do you add the shadows? Well, add it in the areas that they exist on the design. Just look for shadows on the design. You'll see more, you know, black dots in those areas that represent shadow or shading. Okay, so you can see that right there, little area underneath the eave. It means that light is kind of coming from above, hitting those shadow areas. Okay. And that is a lot of fun, okay? So detailing like this. I couldn't get up in that chapel right there, or the steeple. But I can hit it certainly with this pen. It's easy to get to, okay? Okay, so that's that. You see that chapel? There's a little bit more variation to it now, right? In terms of tonal variation, that's really fun to do on structures. Or if you have rocks that are supposed to be round, hit the shadows a little bit more. What color do you do to the shadows? Depends what color the rock is. Um, stay within the color scheme of the actual object. In this case, these cabins happen to be brown. So I'm using my brown tones, tan. Okay, you can see this getting colored in here. So the side of this cabin is darker, so I just went in and I made it darker with the pen. But I don't have to go with like a super dark, you know, version of brown. Just go with a medium or lighter version to start off with and see if you like it. This is the lighter version right here, going and blending it in a little bit. See, I can kind of work it around that window. So the window stays nice and light. It looks like the light is coming from inside the cabin, right? Couldn't get on some of those rocks really good before, so I'm just going and doing that. Okay, now those rocks down there, let's say they're casting a shadow, right? Go in with a, like a darker blue than what I think that color the blue is, because that water is blue. And I'll just hit a little bit of a shadow 
on some of these rocks, okay? Now these are all little tiny, you know, detailed types of things, but that's what kind of this video is about. It's kind of pushing things a little bit further And on the design itself, I do have some shadows drawn into the rocks. That's why I know I can kind of go and enhance them. Now that is an alcohol-based pen, and it's too dark, right? Stands out a little bit too much. So I'll go back in with my lighter color of blue, okay? And I'll just blend those out. So it makes it really easy to utilize these um, types of... Uh, this type of media, okay? It's very forgiving. All right, see that right there? I think this thing is anchored. It's a little bit more dimensional now. So what you do is, this is what it looks like, you know, from, you know, your standard viewing distance, okay? You see the browns in here? Just with your pens, okay? All right, so reiterating. What we have now is an extension of hue. That's number one. Yeah. Not that you have to do anything in this kind of order, but just what I'm talking about is the point of this video. Okay, so there is um, hue, extending your hue, which is the color in given areas. The extension of value, vignettes, shadows, okay, foreground, Extending the range of your depth, okay? A couple things in the foreground. It really pushes things, okay? It adds a lot of contrast. Hard against soft. Dark against light. Near against far, right? It really pushes things. Little details with uh, pens, you know? Coloring books are getting really popular, right? Or they have been. Maybe they're going out by now, but just going in and, you know, coloring in those shadows with some little detailed areas and whatnot, all right? So, after that, we've pushed shadows. Now let's look at some highlights, okay? You don't need to be ever really be intimidated by this type of thing at all, but um, pens, okay? Gel pens, um, paint pens, jelly roll markers, okay? All these different types of things really give us a nice opportunity for adding light into dark areas, okay? Or darker, it doesn't have to be too dark, okay? But let's say an area down here like this where we have um, white, green, yellow. For the most part, there's a little bit of brown in there as well. I like to go in and add some highlights to things. Now, where do you add a highlight? Okay, now you can see in this grassy area right here, the sedge filler. You can see where this little clump right here is defined by the darkness behind it, okay? So where I'd be adding some highlights here are like right on the top ridges of here where that meets shadow. But I mean, it has to be light down here as well, okay? And just kind of look around. I mean, there's not going to be any set area, but this is a fairly, you know, like a medium tone green. So I'm just kind of adding that in some of these areas that are darker than it, okay? If I add this green in an area that's light, it'll look darker. I want it to look a little bit lighter. So this is just giving me a little bit of texture in here, okay? Something like that. I'll come in here with the, you know, the, the, the white pen and yellow pen will stand out much more but this is just kind of establishing a little bit of texture and lighting, okay? Very little lighting though, because it's fairly dark, you know, it's, it's that color, it's like a teal or something. And that's what they call this one turquoise. Okay, now let's go into this and let's take our white one. If you retain some of that area of light, almost the white of the board or the white of the board uh, paper, what you're saying is there's white light hitting it. So I'm going with this and reiterating that again on some of those tops of those clumps with a little bit of white reflected kind of light highlights, okay? 
I don't use it too much around in the other areas unless it's going to represent going to represent um, something like um, wildflowers or something like that. Okay. So, anyways, that's what that looks like right there. So those little dots, and it just adds up to texture overall when you look at it at arm's distance, which is the standard viewing distance. You really don't see them too much, but you know, there's a little bit of a you know, highlighting going on there, a little twinkly reflective light, okay? Like so. So, that's adding a few little textures and it's really fun to do. Okay, down here in my water, um, let's add a few um, highlights in the water, like uh, the water is kind of shimmering specular light, okay? Light that's uh, brighter than white. So that foreground added some texture, and this is just a simple way to add additional texture, dot by dot, okay? Um, I'm adding quite a few dots here, but I don't know, this took me like, I don't know, a few seconds, I don't know. I don't think it took me a minute. Well, you see those little dots down there, kind of dancing on the water's surface type of thing. Where does this also look good? Okay, this looks more like a, I don't know, it's a nighttime sky, or, or it's a daytime turning to night maybe. That's the way I see it. Or, I don't know, could be a glow, early morning glow, but maybe that would be more on the horizon or something like that. In any event, maybe there's a couple stars out, so. Or maybe more than <laughs> a couple. Okay. I'm adding some of these stars as reflections. I'm not trying to match it up perfectly with what's, you know, above it, but... Um, something like that. Okay. So it's kind of fun in terms of a textural statement, but what that did here, going back to contrast, remember contrast in terms of darkness, retaining the light areas. But what that did was you've extended the con uh, the range of contrast within that by a lot, because you have something white next to something dark. Less contrast here, you know, but texture overall. So that really can kind of expand your textural statement in a scene, contrast, Plus, I think everyone finds the night sky, unless you're afraid of night or something like that. I think you, people like stars in the sky. Maybe you won't see as many in this light of day, but let's say it's, I don't know, kind of more magical in terms of the time of day here. So we have that added, okay? That adds a nice light, crisp texture. That's my, that's really big in terms of what I do in my scenes. You know, those little dots can add quite a bit. Just if you start applying them, hold your card at arm's distance periodically through the process because it's easy to add way too many of them, okay? Now, if you add way too many, just wait for your card to dry a little bit. My black here, you know, in the foreground's a little bit wet still, but I can just take a paper towel and let's say I don't like all those stars. Um, let's say right here, okay? I can take a paper towel or napkin or whatever, but see this star right here? That one? I can just take this and I can buff it right out, right? No big deal, right? Because it doesn't soak into your paper. It's not like bleaching the paper out, okay? It's just leaving a raised little bump of uh, 
you know, uh, gel, dried gel so it comes right off if you don't like it. Or if you just add on too many and want to take some out here and there. Okay, so let's stay with this little Q-tip right here. I love adding this effect here, and if you can get this technique down, you know, I think it'll serve you very well. Now what you do is it's really important here, I'll kind of dab this off in this little area so you can see how much ink is kind of coming up. I don't want that much ink on here. I just want kind of a very dry version of it to apply to my card. Okay, and see I'm tapping this off and doing so I'm kind of smashing the tip a little bit and that'll give me a nice soft um, tip to work with because I want this to go on kind of in a nice light application, okay? All right, so here's some light within here and I'm going to try to make that tree seem a little bit lighter on the side of the tree facing that light source, okay? Blotting some of it off, I, I applied too much. I take off just as much as I apply quite often, okay? So anyways, let's take a look at that tree. See that tree right there? It looks like it's capturing some of the light. It's light is shining on it, right? Hopefully. And there's a little bit more of a glow to it because that tree is suddenly more translucent. There's this tree right here sitting in some of that light, right? It's white behind it. I can kind of add a little bit of pigment ink into some of those branches that are in that light area. Okay. Suddenly the light is coming from behind that tree because it's a little bit more diffused, right? The lighting. Let's take a look at it right up here too. Okay. Do I see something like that? Here it is up close. Right? And what that looks like at arm's distance. It's a little bit more subtle because it's farther away, but you can see where it comes into play. Okay, down here, if you want to add a little bit of mist on the, uh, you know, the green carpet, you can do that because I've retained some of that white of the paper or light of the paper. It's not real white, but you know, I can kind of add some of it down there, and that might represent a little mist. I, I mean, I could add some of that around here and there. I wouldn't add too much, though, in areas that are kind of darker because, you know, it stands out a little bit too much. But if you want to put a little bit of mist here and there, why not? Okay. Like something like that. A little mist in the morning, maybe. Okay, now what this is doing is it's adding light into dark, so we're kind of changing the uh, the contrast in some areas. We're lightening it up slightly, okay? And what that did was it turned objects. It's saying that light is hitting it on one side of the tree and not on the other. So we're making the objects look a little bit more three-dimensional. It's atmospheric in terms of putting something in the air or may being made aware of the space in between objects, okay? Let's take a look at this one right here. We've maybe seen a body of water in the morning that might have a little bit of, you know, fog or mist. Okay, it's fairly dark in there, so I won't probably add too much of this. Very, very light touch. I almost have too much ink on it, but I'll try to... Yeah, I can dab some of it off, but I'll just try to uh, dab lighter to apply some of that. Okay, and I can add some of it on the water's surface down here by this light area of the water. So what we're doing before, we added contrast with additional tone, right? 
This is adding a little bit of contrast with light, but what it's also doing here, like those light colored dots added a textural, a crisp textural element. We have a crisp white dot, right? Now we've added a little bit of a soft, kind of, you know, hazy illumination, okay? It's like mist in the air being, you know, that we could see steam, fog, whatever on the water surface. That adds a nice soft um, complement to that crisp white dot. So you've ex suddenly we've ex uh, extended the um, textural range of the given card by putting something soft, okay, against a lot of things that are very crisp, including the impressions, okay? So see, all I've done in a lot of these things right here, these different concepts, is I've taken, you know, what was, uh, you know, a good looking scene, you know, as a foundation. I mean, they could have been done as is, but I've added one color for the most part, you know, to these areas to really change that look. And adding one color, it became almost three because we had where that one color overlapped, the other color became, you know, some mix of the two. All right. So one additional color up here, maybe two colors, you know, additional, including black in the four corners, which can really extend the range of values anchoring things down in the shadows with an additional ink or two to really set them into the scene, okay? And, okay, here's one object in the foreground, okay? One stamp, just stamped in black in the foreground to extend the range of uh, um, uh, the field of view, all right? This one is reads. I use two reads down here, but, you know, could have done just one as well. Texture, gel pens, paint pens, okay? To add that little extra twinkling texture, you know, and light in the darker areas or in the less than dark areas, but just a little bit of texture down there to represent highlights. And to contrast against that, a little bit of pigment ink, okay? You can add more of it in some scenes that are supposed to be foggy or something like that, but just adding that little bit of pigment ink here and there in a very, very light application. Okay, it's, it's not thick, right? See down here is just a little haze. Same thing right there. But that can really introduce this element that didn't exist in a lot of stamp work, which is an element of softness. We have a soft light some soft objects and whatnot. So that, those three, well, I don't know, what was it? Five different things that you can do, but it was just a small step in each one of those things that can really push your scenes to another level in terms of, uh, I don't know, the res uh, resolution of it or whatever, you know, the, uh, the, visual, the visual range of uh, the different, um, I don't know, whatever concepts they're running in there, okay? Color, value, texture, and depth in just very easy ways, okay? So anyways, hope you were able to follow along with that. I hope I explained that well enough. <laughs> and uh, if you stamped along with that, I hope you enjoyed it, and I hope it was easy to follow in terms of the concepts there. Thanks so much for watching, and for always tuning into the uh, Stampscapes channel.